Deep in rural Georgia, there is an ancient game played by hundreds, watched by thousands, and spoken of by millions. Ceremoniously taking place each Easter Sunday, a lone priest invites the two sides of his village, plus anyone mad enough to get involved, to go to battle for a heavy leather ball. I'm former Island Rugby International Mike McCarthy. Join me on my journey as I meet new people, indulge in ancient traditions and embrace a new culture <laughs> and do my best to make it out unscathed. Every year on Easter Sunday, people flock from around the country to Shakuti to observe the century-old game. Just imagine a rugby scrum. Ball in the middle, two teams pushing against each other with the aim of winning back possession, trying to get the ball towards a goal. Now, imagine a scrum that's made up of not 16 people, but hundreds. That is Leila Bertie. The village of Shakuti is divided into two halves, Zemo or Upper Shakuti and Kwemo or Lower Shakuti. Two streams at either side of the village mark the end point where the two teams are trying to get a 16 kilogram ball. At the centre of this ancient tradition is the village priest, Father Saba. As a former Greco-Roman wrestler, Father Saba personifies the game a coming together of spiritual ceremony and raw physicality. I'm very excited to be here in Georgia, beautiful village of Shakuti, as we look to learn more about this historic game of Lilo Berti. It's a huge day in the calendar. What does it mean to the village? For someone who's never played Lelo Berti before, could you explain some of the basic rules? Hearing Father Saba talk ignited an urge to want to play tomorrow, but I needed to speak to some experienced heads before making my decision. 93-year-old Dursan Abkadze played his first game of Leila Berti in 1939 and the local blacksmith had plenty of experience to share. The big question on my mind was just how dangerous is Lelo Berti? Learning of a recent death whilst playing Lelo Berti was giving me some second thoughts. But Dursan's grandson, Zura, 
was on hand to give me some safety tips when at the center of this beautifully brutal game. <laughs> Do you, do you get nervous before you play? nervous before you play? I'm a little bit of 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 a little with my participation confirmed, I went to scout out the stream, my teammates and I will be aiming to get the ball. And if we succeed, win the game. Believe it or not, this is apparently one of the goals. A few frogs creaking down there. Um, so apparently, yeah, the ball gets thrown into here and then the team all dive in together and celebrate the, the winning of the game. Yeah, I'm not sure how you get the whole team, the whole village down here, but let's, let's wait and see. There's a lot of frogs in there, I'm pretty scared of them. Did you hear that, guys? So yeah, the ball will get thrown in all the team will jump down and there'll be massive celebrations. Absolutely beautiful sunny day here in Shikuti. We're at the home of the shoemaker who traditionally in the past has been in charge of the making, the stuffing, the filling of the ball. We've got upper and lower Shikuti all gathered here today and uh, Mama Saba is going to say a few words and a few blessings and uh, get the day started, get the day kicked off. Mad Loba, strength and honour. To see friends and family eat, drink and pray together before they inevitably risk life and limb in the pursuit of a leather ball reminded me of the bond you build with teammates and opponents in rugby. The only difference was they liked to do their drinking before the game. <laughs> Should you get the ball, they will all surround you and it will be easier. They're doing tactics right now. Okay. Uh, around you because you are tall. It looks like I'm getting involved in this game because I was thinking I was going to get involved from the outside, from the periphery, keep my distance, but. I'm speaking to the team captain there. It seems he wants me. He, w he wants me in the epicenter. But he said, "Don't go too hard, too fast. It's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint." So fingers crossed. Just putting some uh, sand in the ball, stuff in the ball. Quite astonishing how heavy the ball is. A bit of wine going in on top of the sand. Make it extra heavy. After a bit of body position practice and fueling up on Georgian food, the ball is stuffed with sand and compacted with wine to weigh a minimum of 16 kilograms. Now the day can finally get underway. This is absolute madness, it's absolutely brilliant. The build up, the energy in Shikuti is, is quite incredible. We're now in the middle of the road, a busy road as you'll see. The ball's been prepared. The minimum, as we know, is 16 kg. It's been transported to the church. Uh, fairly big walk in the middle of the road, and I, I feel like I'm about to get run over, so I'm going to get back in the mix. Ah! 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 Oh my god, that was a bit scary. Once at the church, Father Saba challenges the village to what I can only describe as the world's heaviest high ball practice drill. And with pre game entertainment in full flow and kickoff quickly approaching, it was time for me to get my kit on and prepare myself for the battle ahead. Yeah, Mama Saba or Father Saba has given us this room. 
I suppose you call it his kind of chamber where he gets ready for, for, for before a service. So we've got all our bags, all our equipment here. It feels like I'm in the change room. It feels like I'm in the gladiatorium ready to go out to battle. And uh, yeah, I'm psyched now. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a, I am a little bit apprehensive and nervous because I don't really know what to expect. Uh, here, look, fingers crossed, I'll be chatting to you afterwards. Who's the match? Hands in, hands in, hands in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hey. You alright? Good to see you, man. You alright? So, Port tank control, you know, that's the bar. They had kind of a strategy already. Okay. But they will be giving you some of the things that you, they, they would prefer you to be helping them. Mostly with the ball control. Because sometimes uh, there's there are the effects of stealing the ball and it's now five minutes before kickoff. Amongst all the chaos, the main challenge was identifying who my teammates are. All I'd been told was when the rifle is fired, the game is underway. It's absolute carnage. The place has got so busy. I'm, uh, I found my team, thank you. And I'm going in that direction. The ball's about to be thrown in the air. Be careful. Be careful. Lower or upper? Which team? Which team? Which team? This team. Uh, going that way or this no, one? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just like that, we were off. My first mission was to get my hands on the ball, but from the outset, even catching sight of it whilst 300 Georgians fought for possession proved to be a massive challenge. It wasn't until the mall started moving that I began to see where the real danger lies. It's crazy. You've got barbed wire fences, you've got fences with spikes and poles on, you've got big gutters. It's absolutely crazy, but it's absolutely brilliant at the same time. It looks like they're in someone's garden. I'm going to go and have to help out. I'll be back in a minute. Basically we have been bemoaning for like 15 minutes. We were this close to the ball a couple of times. It's fun, it's fun, it's great. <laughs> After half an hour of navigating garden fences, Upper Shakuti made a huge surge towards their stream. But as Lower Shakutians dug in and we stopped them in their tracks, with no team making progress for a further 20 minutes. But Upper Shakuti found a second wind of energy and made another momentum shifting surge for their stream. They were now just a metre or two from victory.
So yeah, I've been representing Lower Shakuti. Unfortunately, Lower Shakuti have lost the game. It's, uh, it's been a relatively quick game. It's only been going over an hour. You know, some games go for three, four, five, six hours. It's been a great experience, been great to be involved in. I, you know, some of the stuff I've seen, people coming out with pop ribs, uh, fingers broken. Uh, it's just been absolute mayhem and uh, I just can't believe I've been involved in it. But uh, I'm glad I did get involved. Uh, it is literally like a, an hour long scrum. So how they stay in there the whole game, I, d I don't know. now up a Shakutis to take back to their side of the village and place at the grave of someone they had lost in recent years. The chosen grave belongs to Alexandre Megladze, the man who passed away whilst playing Lelo Berti in 2022. To the winning table, I've gate crashed the winners, so uh, this is up in Shakuti celebrating. Oh, thank you, strength and honor. The sun's still absolutely shining, this day's been absolutely fantastic, and uh, you know, there's some absolutely exhausted bodies. If you look over there, some of the guys are absolutely exhausted, they've given everything, they've emptied the tank, they're tired, they're fatigued, they're sore, they're still sweating. Um, they've come back to a cemetery, obviously, a very special occasion in uh, placing the ball in a in a, a grave of someone who's passed in the, in the last year. You can see the emotion around it, people welling up, people pretty teary, but also on the other side of it, celebrating the victory today for Upper Shakuti. Whilst it was a huge honor to be invited to the winning celebrations, it was only right that I find my teammates and reflect on what was a tough day yeah, at the yeah, office. Thank you. That was that right. As custom would have it, the losing team is then also given the ball for a few hours to place at their chosen grave. We end the day as we started it. A drink, the ball, and a friendly word or two. Shahut Kar Almar Jos. Shahut Kar Almar Jos.